Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this session. Uh, in this session, uh, we are going to discuss uh, how to derive uh, IS cow, IS schedule and IS cow and then we will be examining uh, what are the factors uh, that determine the slope of the IS cow and as well as we also discuss the factors that determine the position of the IS cow. Uh, about the IS cow uh, is also called as the goose market equilibrium. So, the IS curve shows uh, the combination of interest rates and the level of income, level of income we mean output here such that planned aggregate spending that is the aggregate demand uh, equals aggregate income. So, here uh, we derive the uh, IS schedule or IS curve uh, by in a two step procedure, first one link between, first examining the link between interest rates and investment. And subsequently, in the second stage, the link between investment and uh, income, investment demand and income. So, in the Keynesian, uh, in the unlike in the simple Keynesian model, uh, in the IS model, uh, we assume investment is no longer treated as exogenous variable. That means not an autonomous variable. But uh, in the previous simple Keynesian model, uh, we treat uh, investment is an autonomous variable. But unlike that. Uh, in the IS model, uh, we introduce uh, money market as well and then subsequently we consider investment also depend upon interest rate as well. This is determined within the system, within the model. So, especially the about the investment demand, you know the relationship between investment demand and rate of interest, you know that there is a inverse relationship. That means, uh, higher the rate of interest, lower will be the investment demand because the cost of production, right? Because interest is one of the cost component of uh, production, that means the cost of borrowing money. So, since increase interest rate raise the price to firms of borrowing for capital equipment, so that means that would reduce as a result, th there will be a reduction in the quantity of investment demand. So, in short, uh, there is an inverse relationship between rate of interest and uh, investment demand. So, let us start the construction of the IS schedule. The condition for equilibrium in the product market is uh, we know that uh, aggregate demand is equal to C plus I plus G and equivalently since uh, we already seen that that in uh, aggregate Y aggregate supply is equal to Y aggregate uh, demand. Uh, where we have already written that aggregate demand is equal to C plus I plus G and aggregate supply is equal to C plus S plus T, right. This one we have written C plus S plus T, uh, this one we already defined that means uh, this one is C plus uh, I plus uh, G. So, that means C is constant, so then we can see that I plus G uh, is equal to S plus T. And considering a simplified case that omits government sector that assuming that government expenditure is equal to 0, uh, tax is equal to 0 that means uh, omitting the government sector we can rewrite this equation as uh, i is equal to because we take uh, g and t as 0 then we can write i is equal to uh, s, right. So, in the case of i you know that i is a that investment is a function of rate of interest. Uh, you know that uh, there is an inverse relationship, higher the rate of interest, lower will be the investment demand and that means it is a function of rate of interest and savings, the household savings is a function of uh, the income, right. So, obviously, the uh, saving is a function of income, higher the uh, income, higher will be the saving and there is a positive relationship between uh, saving and income. So, finally, we can say that I R is equal to uh, S Y. So, from this uh, deriving uh, the relationship starting with the inverse relationship between investment and uh, rate of interest that you can see that consider uh, an interest rate uh, R naught considering an interest rate R naught uh, you know that uh, the investment demand is I naught. Uh, large because the low very low rate of interest you can see that there is large uh, demand for vast demand for uh, investment right. So, for this level of investment then the amount the investment is the amount of I naught as shown in uh, this schedule. 
so in order to generate this again look at this when the rate of interest increase to r1 investment decline to uh, when the rate of interest increase uh, you can see that investment is going to be i1 and further if the rate of interest further increase to r2 the investment decrease to uh, i2 now let's consider the first case initial position of r0 uh, when the rate of interest is r0 you can see that uh, investment is i0 and the point here is that in order to finance this much investment and what is the source of investment the finance for the fund for investment investment is generated through saving because saving is uh, the necessary condition the source of this investment so that means if uh, rate of interest is r not i not is the uh, investment desired investment so in order to generate this much uh, investment that i not uh, saving must increase that corresponding to i not you can see that uh, saving must uh, in increase to this much that means in order to convert a uh, generate i not we need a equivalent s not of saving so look at uh, schedule the, the the diagram second diagram this one uh, on the y axis we are putting saving and on the x axis we are putting y since we already familiar now that uh, saving is a function of income there is a positive relationship so in the first case where here we are seeing that when the rate of interest is r not uh, you can see that i not is the investment so in order to generate this much i not investment we need saving s not uh, invest saving so this s not saving is uh, require this much income right because total income is equal to c plus uh, s right total income here we can put that that means disposable income so c plus s we can put here so this is coming from this much income is required so that means in order to generate uh, this much saving in order to finance i not investment y not level of income is required right so that means the second second diagram shows that uh, s not saving is possible through uh, y not level of uh, uh, income what if rate of interest increase that is r1 in this first diagram then you know that uh, investment will be declining to uh, i1 uh, then in this case i1 require only s1 amount of saving that means this s1 is less than s not so correspondingly only y not level of income is required further when the rate of interest increase to r2 then you know that uh, corresponding investment is uh, i2 that means i2 require s2 level of saving so s2 level of saving can be, it will come from uh, y2 level of income so what we have shown in the second diagram is the positive relationship between saving and uh, income now uh, transforming all these variables into uh, that means the corresponding for example when the rate of interest is r not uh, we know that investment is i not uh, the corresponding saving is s not and corresponding level of income is uh, y not so putting this one that means uh, transforming this one into another diagram making relationship between interest rate and this income that is interest rate on the y axis and income on the x axis you know that r not investment uh, R, sorry r not uh, level of rate of interest uh, require y not level of uh, income and similarly r1 rate of interest require only y1 level of income and r2 rate of interest require uh, y2 level of income so converge in that uh, linking this one uh, making a relationship you can see that there is a inverse relationship we can uh, derive here rate of interest and income uh, that means we can derive an is curve from this for diagram that uh, uh, the first diagram and the second diagram and then where we can see uh, an inverse relationship uh, between rate of interest and the level of income so this is the is curve uh, so summarizing here we can see that the is curve is derived from the first two diagrams uh, two curves uh, where and then we plot the is curve as a relationship between uh, rate of interest and uh, income and then we can see that there is an inverse relationship between both so that means when the rate of interest is uh, r not we need y not a level of income and when the rate of interest is high uh, then we need only y2 level of income so that in this market we can see that uh, saving is equal to investment so and each and every point along this curve uh, denotes 
product market equilibrium product that we mean saving and investment here the output market equilibrium each, each and every point uh, what does it mean uh, for example when the rate of interest is low we are we are seeing that at a low rate of interest r not the income is very high what does it mean so the economic intuition behind here is uh, at a low rate of interest uh, investment demand increases right investment demand increases so that equivalently saving level a large amount of saving is required when the uh, investment increases in order to finance that so in order to ensure that that much saving uh, can come from income right why so that means when the rate of interest is low investment demand increases and the uh, corresponding level uh, level of saving has to be generated which is possible from the corresponding level of income so that means low level of rate of interest investment de demand increases saving in must so that saving must increase and as uh, for that the income must also increase so that means again uh, that means uh, in order to make the saving is equal to investment that is the product market in equilibrium when the rate of interest decrease in order to generate sufficient amount equivalent amount of uh, because when the say, rate of interest decrease uh, investment increases and in order to generate uh, the sufficient amount uh, of saving uh, the income must also increase so that means uh, when the saving rate of interest decrease uh, income must increase so that product market will be in equilibrium so that's why we are getting an inverse relation the negative slope for the i schedule now including government sector as well because the first diagram uh, what we are shown that only investment uh, is a function of rate of interest uh, now we what we can do that we can also add um, government expenditure as well then the, that means uh, the to aggregate demand curve shift rightwards now it also represent government expenditure as well suppose uh, at this rate uh, this much is the uh, this much is the uh, investment de demand investment and if we at this point uh, this is the investment demand uh, so then accordingly we write this uh, diagram what if they, we include this much uh, government expenditure uh, this is autonomous so as a result you can see that the curve will be shifting to this much that means this much uh, distance uh, it shifts so that means that the um, is curve, I, I curve investment curve plus uh, government spending is denoted in this first plane of a first diagram then accordingly you can also see that uh, government expenditure is normally financed through taxes so equivalently tax also increases so that i naught plus g is equal to s naught plus t so accordingly you can write uh, this is our uh, new uh, diagram showing uh, income with the, le the level of income with the saving and uh, tax both are denoted on the y axis saving plus taxes are given on the y axis here so then we again we know that when the rate of interest decrease um, uh, investment increase uh, level of income uh, saving must increase uh, so that uh, in order to finance that income also must increase so that we can say that uh, this the uh, we can find out the is schedule new is schedule again it is uh, downward sloping uh, let's now uh, derive uh, the IS equation. Uh, prior to that, let's have a quick overview of the simple Keynesian model, uh, which we had discussed in the previous session. So I am just showing you only here, just um, displaying here in the slide. That means aggregate demand is this. Then uh, we have expanded what is consumption. Uh, then. Uh, we uh, we have a rewritten uh, elaborator that the uh, aggregate demand is equal to C plus I plus G uh, then elaborating this and solving for Y and finally uh, we found equilibrium income can be denoted with uh, this equation that means Y bar uh, is equal to 1 by 1 minus B where we have mentioned that B, min B is marginal propensity to uh, consume that we have discussed in the previous class uh, that is B, B is marginal propensity to consume uh, and remaining uh, the marginal propensity to save is also there that is called uh, 1 minus uh, B uh, is equal to both is equal to 1. Right. This is called we write it shortly MPC marginal propensity to consume and 1 minus B is marginal propensity to save uh, that equal to both equal to summing this we will getting 1. So this also considers the simple Keynesian multiplier. 
on the right hand side these are all the autonomous variables that ea is the intercept uh, when even when the income is zero there will be some level of consumption that is denoted by a t is tax i is here actually this is uh, autonomous consumption uh, what in the simple keynesian model i is just an autonomous consumption uh, g is government expenditure so in order to see any change in for example government expenditure uh, we can see due to change in government expenditure income will increase uh, 1 by 1 minus b that is a multiplier times uh, government expenditure right for example you can see that del uh, y is equal to uh, 1 by 1 minus b that is a multiplier uh, times uh, del g so this is the symbol keynesian model uh, let us see how this can be expanded into an is model so, in the symbol Keynesian model, what we are going to see that the symbol Keynesian model, uh, we assume that there is only autonomous component of investment, but in the IS model, we also bring money market into the picture. Then here, investment, total investment is a function of that uh, is equal to uh, autonomous component is uh, I bar minus uh, there is a inverse relationship between rate of interest and investment that is called induced interest rate induced investment that one is denoted with this one uh, that means um, rate of interest uh, negatively uh, related that uh, investment uh, negatively related to uh, rate of interest that means this component so here i1 is uh, greater than 0 uh, that means induced component is uh, greater than 0 uh, in the is model we also bring that means we decompose the total investment into uh, autonomous and that is this is autonomous and another this one is interest rate induced component right in the simple Keynesian model we only assumed that a autonomous component no interest induced component so the saving is equal to uh, you know that uh, y is equal to c plus s yes, uh, so then um, uh, s is equal to you can see that s is equal to uh, y minus c uh, so accordingly you can rewrite uh, uh, s is equal to uh, what is the c c you can take the consumption function uh, then you can rewrite it accordingly like this so finally for the equilibrium uh, we said that i plus g should be equal to s plus t uh, then rewriting i as this uh, autonomous and interest rate in induced component uh, plus g uh, we can rewrite it like uh, in this way we can rewrite it this way uh, then finally is equation is equation the necessary condition is the condition is that i plus g should be equal to s plus t we can write rewrite the is equation in this way where you can write uh, y is equal to 1 by 1 minus b times a plus i bar plus g minus b t minus 1 my i 1 r divided by uh, 1 minus b so this is the uh, is equation uh, that we derived uh, we are just adding this component to this that means uh, we are bringing money market also in the picture that means the autonomous not only the autonomous component of investment but also the interest rate induced component as well we are bringing here uh, let us see the slope of the is curve because in the is schedule uh, we write like this here a rate of interest uh, here a level of income so the curve is like this we know that the sign sign is inverse the inverse inverse relationship so the slope of the curve that means del r divided by del y uh, is equal to uh, we need to find out from here so what we can find here uh, is that from this the del y you can see the del y uh, part you can take it actually uh, this del y corresponding to uh, del r uh, but we that we are getting the inverse of the slope so what we need is actually instead of uh, del r del r del del y for here del y uh, divided by del r uh, we are getting minus uh, i1 i1 uh, divided by 1 minus b uh, but the slope is this one that uh, del r divided by del r divided by del y so that then we will be getting the slope as um, inverse that uh, 1 minus b uh, divided by uh, i1 so the slope of the is that uh, del r uh, divided by del y uh, we are getting this one so this is the slope of uh, the is schedule slope of the is is 
uh, you can see that 1 minus b is nothing but marginal propensity to save MPS and I1 uh, is the interest uh, elasticity of investment. This is uh, interest elasticity uh, of investment. So, these are the slopes of uh, the uh, two variable that determining the slope of IS schedule. So, so summary the understanding the IS curve slope, uh, IS curve is negatively slope. A fall in the interest rate motivates firms to increase investment spending uh, which drives up a total plan spending, a spending means here total investment. So, to restore uh, that means in this case you can say that uh, investment is increasing. So, when only investment is increasing then you can see that investment is going to be greater than saving. So, in order to ensure restore this equilibrium uh, in the goods market uh, saving must also increase. So, in order to for that income also must increase right income must also increase. So, you need to restore equilibrium in the goods market output must increase. So, that is the economic induction why IS curve is negatively slope. So, coming to the uh, factors that determine in the slope of the IS schedule, uh, there are two factors uh, that one we just shown there. One is saving function uh, that is marginal propensity to save and the other one we have seen the interest elasticity. So, let us call it both in this term that means interest elasticity of uh, investment let us call investment function and marginal propensity to save let us call uh, saving function. So, coming to the first part uh, interest elasticity of investment uh, what if uh, assume two scenario one uh, the interest is interest elasticity of investment is very inelastic. Uh, another case is one case is uh, it is very inelastic and another case is uh, it is uh, very highly elastic. So, in this diagram the part 1 uh, investment schedule um, this diagram uh, that means this investment uh, curve uh, it is very steep that means uh, this is very inelastic relatively inelastic this one is inelastic uh, and this I1 curve this is more elastic. So, what does it mean uh, ela inelastic means? Inelastically, you can look at from here. Uh, even when the rate of interest decrease from R1 to R2, in the case of inelastic investment curve, you can see that um, here only a small increase in investment, right? From when the rate of interest change from decline from uh, R1 to R2, uh, investment increase only from I1 to I2. That means the uh, investment interest elasticity of investment is uh, inelastic. In contrast, what if the interest elasticity of investment is very elastic? Then you can see that a small a decline in rate of interest from R1 to R1 to R2, you can see uh, investment has increased from uh, I1 to uh, I2 here into uh, this, this much uh, increase in investment. So, you can see here that uh, corresponding to this one in the first case, uh, you know that since in uh, when the interest elasticity of in, in investment is inelastic, there was only small increase in investment, so that only a small increase in saving is required, so that only a small similar, so correspondingly a small increase in income is required. But if the interest elasticity of investment is very high elastic, then you know that uh, there is large small decrease in rate of interest, there is large increase in investment. So, that the corresponding increase in saving also must be high which can be generated from uh, which needs a large increase in income. That means, we are as denoted by this much, uh, this much uh, increase in uh, income is required. So, in both case if we assume uh, interest elasticity of investment is inelastic, then our IS curve is going to be very steep. Uh, in contrast to this, if interest elasticity of investment is uh, elastic, then the IS curve is going to be very flat. So, second factor is uh, saving function. Uh, in the case of saving function, it means what if what the marginal propensity to save. For suppose we already seen that MPC plus MPS uh, is equal to 1, uh, assume that 0 0.8 is MPC and 0 0.2. Uh, is MPS. So, and initially as you take two scenario in one case um, MPS that the marginal propensity to save is 0 0.2 uh, 
uh, in another cases uh, MPS uh, is going to be for example 0 0.9. So, in case 1 when the marginal propensity to save uh, is small in this case due to change in rate of interest a large increase in income is required to finance uh, the saving because we know that when the rate of interest decrease uh, we know that investment will be increasing uh, then what we need saving must increase. So, in this case when the when the proportion only 20 percentage of the when the MPS is 2 means MPS is 0 0.2 it means uh, only 20 percent of the income will be used for saving purpose right. So, that means here say a large increase in income is required a large increase in income is required uh, when the MPS is uh, small. In contrast to this what if MPS is very high 0 0.9. So, in this case we can say, say same storyline rate of interest increase uh, investment increase saving increase. But since the marginal propensity to save is 0 0.9 that is 90 percent of the income uh, will be saved that means only a small increase in income is required a small increase in uh, R is required to generate uh, the necessary uh, amount of level of savings. So, that means saving function uh, influence in this way that means when the MPS is very high a small increase uh, in, in, increase in income is required uh, so that uh, product market is in equilibrium that means I is equal to S right. Uh, in contrast to that if the MPS is very small for a rate of interest a decrease in rate of interest uh, in order to generate a necessary amount of saving a large increase in, in income is required so that uh, necessary amount of saving can be generated. Uh, this is a numerical example of uh, cal calculating that a uh, estimating the IS curve I have given here C the values of C, I and G and uh, you can plug this value in this equation and then accordingly you can uh, find out the values. So, here uh, you will be finding the IS equation either you can solve it for the level of income or you can solve it for uh, the rate of interest. So, in the next session uh, we are going to discuss what are the factors that shape the IS schedule. Uh, thank you for watching this video and see you in the next session. Thank you.